Welcome to week four of the Adulting Bible Study Series. Today's topic is growing by slowing. Something that is very, very difficult to me. I love uh, one of the key scriptures here, which is Psalms 46, 10. It says, be still and know that I am God. That scripture is on the wall of the hallway right down the from our offices. And every time I go by it, I find myself singing. There's a Stephen Curtis Chapman song that says, be still and know that I am God. Love it. One of my favorite songs. Go, go look it up and listen to it. But um, it reminds me of something that is so difficult right now for me, age and stage wise, you know, my kids are involved in, in so much and I spend so much time running around for them and then working. It is hard for me to slow down. But what we'll find and hopefully discuss today is that the Bible tells us that it is extremely important for us to slow down and wait on the Lord. If not, we find ourselves worn out and exhausted trying to fight fights on our own. So take a second and read 2 Peter 3.18 and also read Psalm 46.10 and then we'll dive into this discussion. I love point number one uh, today, prioritize time in God's presence. And uh, uh, I find when I'm not spending time with God in an intentional way, then I'm not, I'm not growing spiritually. I start to get stagnant. Yeah. And uh, you brought up a great point, how we can get so busy. And uh, sometimes we throw God out instead of something else yeah. that isn't a priority um, so I love what the psalmist writes here. You are my God. Early I will seek you. My soul thirsts for you. And so the psalmist realizes he needs God and he needs to build that time into his life. And then the other verse, uh, Psalm 122.1, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And it's been great the last few weeks, um, starting to see a lot more folks Coming coming back back on campus. Yeah. So nice. Now, I understand there's some folks watching from home, and you can't make it here, and um, you need to be at home. That's fine. But uh, this is a great time also. If you can get back on our campus, there's something very powerful about gathering together and worshiping together. And uh, um, the psalmist says, I was glad when I came into the house of the Lord and gathered together. So, uh, so we invite you to come back and uh, be a part of what's going on on campus if you can get here. And one of the practical things I've done to prioritize my time is I've put a widget from the verse of the day on my phone because, you know, I go to my phone a million times a day. So every time I see this, it reminds me that either I have or I haven't spent time in God's Word today. So very practical um, application there for you. The question is why is it important to make time alone with God one of my top priorities? Point number two says, tune out and tune in. And I love the way this reads in the message in Psalms 46. It says, step out of traffic Take a long, loving look at me, your high God, above politics and everything. How apropos is this verse for the time we're in right now? I mean, if you're tuning into the television or if you're tuning into your social media feed, all you're seeing right now are political ads that are causing division and strife and making us tense and stressed out. But what the psalmist is telling us here, he, no, let's get out of that. Let's step aside of everything that's got you running 100 miles an hour and take some time and rest and focus your eyes on God. I love this verse for, for this time that we're in. Mm. Yeah, so true. And of course, it's important to be informed politically and to be engaged in our society. But sometimes that just becomes such a distraction or a tool to for divisiveness and it can become so draining. Um, I guess our question for for this one would be this. Um, What is the distraction in your life right now? It says step out of the traffic. What is the busyness? What is the distraction? What is that thing that's keeping you from taking a long, loving look at our high God? 
and staying focused on him. Point number three, welcome times of waiting. And uh, this is interesting. Um, we often hear a lot of teaching about a leap of faith. Mm. Well, I just jump out there and do it. And, uh, and I, I've taught that myself and sometimes beat myself up for, you know, why don't you just jump out there and do it? And I think it is important. There are times for a leap of faith when we're certain that God has called us to do a specific thing at a specific time. And we should take that leap of faith and um, face our doubts and fears and trust God and do it. But there are also times where we're just not sure. We don't know exactly where God's leading. And we see, frankly, in the scriptures, I see a lot more of that, wait on God. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's harder to wait than take a leap of faith. Yeah. Um, but good things can come when we wait. Um, we can experience God's presence in a new way. We can learn patience. Um, we can allow God to renew our strength, like it says in Isaiah 40. And uh, so there, there are great things that can happen when we're willing to wait. And, um, and so that is my challenge, and that's our challenge. Are we willing to wait on God? Yeah, and I love this how it says it in Isaiah, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. It, how does it say we renew our strength? It says we renew our strength by waiting on the yeah. Lord. Now you're a runner and I'm a runner and Lee, our cameraman here is a runner too. So the, I love there where it says that those who run, the, they will shall run and not be weary. Mm. You know, like I know, like I, I just uh, this past week, I ran a 5k. And when I showed up, they also had a 15k, but I decided um, I don't want to run the 15K because I'm not sure if I have enough endurance right. to run that 15K. But unfortunately, life doesn't give us a choice. It doesn't say, hey, do you want to run the 15K or the 5K? It says, hey, here's a marathon. But the only way that we can endure to the end is what he says. But those who wait on the Lord, don't, don't jump in it and try to do it on your own strength, on your own time. Wait, mm. and the Lord will renew your strength, and you'll be able to endure what life brings your way. So let's ask this question. Why does God sometimes take so long to reveal his will to me? Points four and five go together really well. Meditate on what matters most. And then five, pause often for prayer, praise, thanksgiving. And uh, in the psalm, we see the psalmist warning us against getting bogged down in all this negativity, all these distractions, all these false teachings and lies. Um, and he says, uh, don't follow the advice of the wicked. Don't stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. Why? Because... It destroys us. It brings us down. It 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 uh mm -hmm. it distracts us from what matters most. Um, and then uh, in Psalm one forty five, we're reminded to meditate on God's majestic, glorious splendor and His wonderful miracles. So great contrast there. And um, we have Thanksgiving coming up, yep. which uh, is a time when we can certainly apply point number five. five. We could also apply that every day of our lives. Yeah, every day. And I love the verse there for point number five, always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances. Man, I was so frustrated with something just this morning. And it wasn't until I got here in the office and I started preparing for this and read that verse and I realized I should have stopped and prayed about that situation long, long ago and would have been a lot less frustrated. So for myself, my question is why in the world is prayer sometimes the last mm, thing I do yeah. instead of the first thing I right. do. And according to what he says here, if, if we should pray and praise and be thankful all the time. So ask this question for yourself. Do I take the time to create the environment I need to focus totally on God? 